Hi, welcome back to Not GQ. Here are a bunch of things that I can't, but probably can, live without. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, I just got back from a week-long road trip across the United States, and I figured what better time than now to lift the veil on what's in my camera bag, because I get a lot of questions about my backpack, and most of the time I vehemently ignore them. So because I just got back from a road trip, I can say with a reasonable amount of confidence, these are the things that are usually found in my camera bag. This is the REI brand Rucksack. This backpack is pretty spacious overall, but it's not a photography backpack. It doesn't actually have the dividers or anything to separate camera gear. So I'm warning you ahead of time, I pretty much just jam all my crap in here. Oh, f what the f just happened? Well, my microphone just broke. This backpack is what I brought with me to Nepal. And after two weeks of hiking every day and not showering, it doesn't even smell like shit. I don't know how that's possible, but it gets a thumbs up from me. I take this backpack with me whenever I travel, and I know someday soon I'll be visiting hell with it. All right, I gotta figure out this microphone thing. As I was saying, to help organize a backpack not designed to carry cameras, I use this yellow cubed thing. I don't know what it's called, but it's got dividers and padded compartments inside, so you know it's ready for some action. First off, the most important thing in a camera bag is the camera of the day. I typically travel with two cameras. On this recent road trip, I brought with me the Mamiya 7, and it fits pretty well face down in this thing. If I'm trying to cram more shit in there than usual, I'll bring the Plapple Makina 670 because it collapses down for better storage. All right, so I generally also carry a smaller camera around with me. It's generally either the Yashica T4 or the Contax T2, which is made of titanium, so it's not gonna break. At least that's the lie that I tell myself every day. I will sometimes also carry my journal and my Polaroid SX70. Generally, I wrap those two up in a rubber band and kind of just cram it wherever. I don't have the SX70 at the moment because it's in the shop. I won't show you what's inside the journal because it's deeply personal. Just kidding. It's just a bunch of bad drawings of my favorite foods, like bananas, cucumbers, popsicles, hot dogs, corn dogs, eggplant, etc. In terms of accessories, I have quite a few. Batteries. I have a lot of cameras that take similar batteries, so it's always good to carry extra. Plus, they're fun to give to children to swallow. Sunglasses, because it's important to look cool while you're out shooting. Extra pair of pants in case I shit myself. Handheld light meter. This one varies in and out of the bag. Some of my cameras don't have an internal light meter, and sometimes I'd like a little bit more of an accurate reading than what my phone gives me. So this is the Siconic L608, and yeah, it's pretty solid. No complaints thus far. Microfiber cloth is crucial. Every photographer should have like 10 of these. When my cameras got drenched by the rain in Iceland, not only did I cry a lot, but I used these microfiber cloths to wipe them down thoroughly. Alternatively, I shoot a lot in the desert in abandoned buildings, so sometimes a player needs to wipe all the dust off of his lens. Remember to wipe in circles on the lens, not your ass. I also carry a shutter trigger wire. This is pretty much required if you're doing large format night photography or you just don't want to shake the camera. I'd recommend getting a few of these and leaving one in your bag permanently because it's pretty easy to forget and one day you'll get to your location and be f***ed. It's kind of a rite of passage for every photographer. Lee filters, or really just filters of any kind. I mean, I'm a pretty simple guy. I like to hike, I like to play video games, I like to hang out with my dog, I get completely naked when I take a dump, and I typically only use one or two filters ever. A yellow filter and a one quarter promist filter. The problem is I have a bunch of lenses with different filter sizes, so instead of buying 100 filters for every lens, I just use this Lee filter system and have a bunch of step up rings. The downside is, there isn't really one. Unless you have lenses that have f***ing massive filter size threads, then you'll need to figure out some sort of other getup. Film. This is an obvious one. Uh, I tend to pack more than I think I'll need because it's happened way too many times where I've run out. On my recent trip, I shot more film than I ever have in one go, which is a good thing because it means my freezer is a little more cleared out than usual, but bad because it was expensive to get all those rolls developed. L bracket. My current tripod head is kind of a pain in the ass if you want to shoot a composition vertically. Having an L bracket makes it super easy to flip your camera on its side. 
uh oh an apple product so yeah an ipod and airpods because sometimes you're traveling or waiting for the perfect light that and the 32 hours of Hoobastank that I have on here isn't going to listen to itself. Why not just use music streaming on my phone? Well, sometimes you're on location in the middle of nowhere in Fart, Texas, and there's no service. So offline is the way to go. Speaking of entertainment, sometimes I will carry a book around with me for some light reading, or if I want to appear intelligent to those around me. Right now I'm reading Beyond the Aquila Rift, which you might recognize from an episode of Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. And if you don't recognize it, and you want to watch it, maybe just don't watch it with your parents. I've been really into cosmic horror lately, so if anyone has any recommendations, leave them below. And don't give me recommendations for like coloring books or Captain Underpants, because I'm not at that level of reading yet. Anyway, that's about it for the inside of the bag. On the outside of the bag, I have this Peak Design clip that allows easy access to my cameras when I'm hiking. This thing was super clutch in Nepal. It's really convenient if you have to, or are being begged to, put your camera down and have a real human experience. Also on the outside, I have this Garmin GPS locator for emergencies. If I'm carrying it on my person, then it's generally attached to the outside of the bag, like so. If the people from the show Lost had one of these, then that show would only be like one 12 minute episode. Bear pepper spray. I generally don't carry this with me, but it's one of those things that it's better to have and not need than need and not have. I got it because we were camping and hiking in Montana and that's bear country. While I'm quite a good screamer and I'm very good at pushing other people down in front of me, it's good to know that I'm covered. Sometimes I use it as a way to get people to step out of my shot. Last but not least, field notes. Pretty self-explanatory. I use this notebook to write down reciprocity times for the different film stocks that I use, and I also write little messages to myself. As you can see, Portra 400, Ilford HP5, T-Max 400, and Cinestill are all listed because they're about the only films that I shoot on the regular. Well, that about wraps it up. Before we go, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you ready to make your personal portfolio shine and impress your whole school, office, or GOAT yoga class? Then look no further. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform with hundreds of professional pre-designed templates for you to build off of. Don't worry if you don't know the first thing about constructing websites. The user interface is incredibly straightforward and simple. Plus, Squarespace offers judgment-free, around-the-clock, 24-7 customer support if you do hit a snag. I built my own website through Squarespace and continue to update it when I have new work I want to show off. It's easy and convenient having a one-stop location for everything attributed to my brand, whatever that is. Squarespace's custom templates and gallery settings made it super easy to host my entire photography portfolio. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, see you on the next one, if there is a next one.